engine bays you can eat off of. Okay. Uh, I just, it's a show that I've always kind of wanted to go to, kind of like Wreckfest. Yeah. And you know, I just saw that it's coming to Philly in August, and it's on Saturday. I didn't know if you'd want to go with me or if that would interest you. Oh, baby. I mean, yeah. I mean, I'll probably go. Was it, uh, you said you're going to drive over there, I guess, or? I guess that's the only way Yeah, so I'd probably just, you know, get up in the morning and just drive there. And the question I, is, is this guy I taking a DSM? That's the real question. Uh, no, nah, I don't even drive. No, if that's something you'd want to do, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I'll check it out. I'll check out iBogMe. Just give me the date, and then I'll request off. And if I can get off, I'm definitely going. I'll go. I think it's, I want to say it's the 25th of August. Okay. Got so, it. You have a while. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, I'm I'll put it in my... Give you some notice. Yeah, yeah, I'll put it in for sure. And then, and then I'll probably um, bring my camera stuff with me. That way I can yeah. do some filming while I'm there, you know. Yep, and then we can get Philly cheesesteaks while we're down there. Oh, actually, there's some good Cambodian restaurants down in Philly, too. Yeah, I could so, do that. Yeah, we hit that but up. But it's, uh, yeah, it's just a show that I've never been to. I've always kind of wanted to. Well, we going on August one. 25th, bro. So, that one's to roll with me. Oh, I'm rolling with you. Go check out some type bars and shit. Oh, we're going to check out some type bars and type bows and type Eric's and type burritos. <laughs> All right, player. Well, I'll speak out to this guy. All right, man. I'll holler. Yeah, man. I'll see you, dude. All right. All right. Peace out. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Just got off the phone with Eric. You know, we're just chilling here. Um, so here it is. This is a 2003 Subaru Forester. Uh, as you can see, there's 190,000 miles on the clock. Um, I just had an oil change today. Um... Yeah, I just want to talk about this car of buying, pretty much buying a, you know, a third, a 15-year-old car in 2018. Uh, I got this car when it had 174,000 miles on it, and um, it was making a really loud noise in the back, which is the uh, passenger side uh, rear wheel bearing. Um, that was kind of annoying. Um, so got that fixed to pass inspection, had a couple tires. So it cost me about five, six hundred dollars to pass inspection when I bought it. Um, but I, yeah. So anyways, so when looking, you know, buying a car this old, I mean, you're going to take a chance. There's a 50, 50 chance or less or more with everything. I apply this 50, 50 rule to everything in life. Actually, just, you know, you're going to take a chance on everything. Um, this car, you know, when, especially when you get older cars, you want to make sure that it's maintained. Well, one thing that helps is when the owner has records like paper, physical documents of work that's been done to this car so past wheel changes tire changes um you know all that stuff and obviously this super has been known for their uh, head gaskets so the head gaskets were um replaced on this car at 154,000 miles so 20,000 miles prior to when i bought it um you know this car had the head gaskets changed so that was really awesome um and but yeah so before i had this before I was, was looking at the Forest, I actually had a 2007 Corolla, and that was a great car. I liked it because, it, I mean, it got really great gas miles. My commute was probably about 70 miles to work, round trip uh, day. So, um, you know, that that really helped a lot. I was spending like $20, you know, a week in gas, you know, to drive 300 something miles, whereas, you know, when I, before I had, <clears throat> I had my Legacy and I didn't have the Corolla, I was getting like 20 miles per gallon in the Legacy, and that is turbo, so I was paying about $40 in gas a week, and you know, that was like about like 100 and, 160 bucks, I would say, a month in gas, so that was crazy, and plus I, I hated putting miles on the Legacy, um, you know, because I really, you know, that's, that's my tuner project, and I want that to, you know, pretty much um, save that and, you know, pay it off pretty much. Um, 
but yeah, so now since I got the Corolla, I was able to keep miles off that a lot. Um, <clears throat> but the reason I got this was because my brother had a Toyota Tacoma and he actually uh, wrecked that. But it was a great truck. It was a four-cylinder Tacoma. It got great gas mileage. He got like 30-something miles a gallon as well. <clears throat> but it had like nothing powered. You know, it had the crank windows and all that stuff. So, I mean, I kind of felt bad for him. So, he, uh, every time he drove my car, you know, he always talked about wanting to buy it. And I was like, well, I mean, maybe one day. And then one day it uh, finally happened and, you know, um, so basically he got the Corolla and then <clears throat> I got, <clears throat> I pretty much got the, um, you know, got used that money to get the, uh, to start looking for a car. So my budget was about, was about three, about three grand. And, um, you know, I was stumbling, I was looking at cars, I was looking at different cars, I was, looking at, I was thinking about getting another Corolla, um, I was thinking about you know, getting another Subaru. The only thing that was holding me back on Subarus is was the fuel efficiency wasn't as good. I mean, the Foresters around this generation, the SG body style specifically was what I really liked. I like the 03, the 05 body style of these things. And they got about 25 miles to a gallon. So, you know, getting a, getting a daily driver for me personally, it always has to be a naturally aspirated engine just because there's less moving parts, you know, less things to worry about maintaining. You know, so so that's why um, you know I got the NA version of the Forester. Um, but overall, I've been really happy with it. So when I first got it, right now the car gets about 25, uh, 25 to 26 miles to the gallon. When I first got it, I always do these few basic things. I always make sure I'm switching to synthetic oil. You know, I guess nothing but synthetic. Um, I always gotta upgrade the Bosch Icon. Wipers, those are the best wiper blades ever. I've had, I've had them on all my vehicles, and they're just they're the best, uh, in my opinion. Um, and and after that, the only thing I didn't like about the car when I got it was the color, obviously, because it was gold, and I hate gold. And my Corolla was gold, but they both cars ran very well and drove so well that I just it over pretty much overrided the fact that okay. It's not the color you want. Everything thing, that's perfect. So this car has, you know, got your power windows, got this giant sunroof, which is awesome. Uh, you know, climate controls. It has an aftermarket radio already installed on it. I got my iPod hooked up, the classic in there. Um, but yeah, I mean, this thing has a lot of storage too. I keep, you know, just everything. And it's, I couldn't ask for more. It's got heated wiper blades. Um, yeah, it's got a little bit of a little bit of everything. This car, and I, I was really, I'm very happy with it. Um, some of the things I don't like. There's obviously a lot of wind noise as you can hear. There's a lot of interior cabin noise. Um, you can hear wind on certain. Depending on the temperature, you can hear the wind in this little area here. I don't know, but it's like rubber seal they use. Um, I don't hear any dash rattle. Maybe that's the legacy, but this doesn't have a dash rattle. But it's a bit noisy, so it's not like a quiet ride. Something like a Lexus or or a Mercedes. Usually they have really nice, quiet cabins. You know, this car not exactly, and um, and that's okay. Like I said, I'm I'm a, I'm a, I'm a I'm an average person with average budget, or actually probably below average. I uh, you know I just love cars, and you know when you don't make a you know you're not a millionaire, you you, know, you get what you can get. So this is what I got. And, uh, and I love it. Like I said, it's got leather. I mean, it's, you know, you're not going to have, like, top of the line Ghostbusters, uh, Corinthian leather or whatever. But you know what? It's all good because, you know, I love it. It's a, it's a running vehicle, and it it gets at least 25 miles a gallon. You know, and it's uh, it's been good. It's been treating me good. Um, so right now, I do have modifications on this car. Uh, since I've gotten it, I have installed coilovers. Uh, I try to document all the mods I've done to this car just to help other people that are, you know, picking up these cars or starting to modify them, you know, at a later age. Um, so uh, I have coilovers on this. The coilovers like 300 bucks shipped. They have adjustable dampening, and they ride really well. They've been still riding really well. And it's and I'm really I'm really shocked at how well you know they've been holding up because I have BC on the uh, Legacy, and, you know, they, they ride great as well. Um, see the coilers on this. I also have the retrofit from Circuit Demon. They're actually currently not installed right now because the battery in this car is still from, like, 2000, um, 
I want to say 2011, I believe. So it's a seven-year-old battery, so I'm expecting to go out soon. Um, one issue, though, why I took out the retrofits is because the back of the D2S projector is it goes so far back, it's actually hitting against uh, the battery. So the battery time was rusted, so that was replaced. So now all I gotta do is get a new battery. Uh, once I replace the battery, hopefully it's a slightly smaller and I can, you know, reinstall the headlight back in and, you know, get those uh, retrofits back in from Circuit Demon. I uh, got it because I love, I love the headlight, the projector cut off from retrofits. I mean, they, I mean, they can get pretty pricey, but it's all about what you like, and that's that's what I like. Um, and I do, I do have, uh, I got the unequal, head, uh, unequal length headers. Uh, my friend convinced me to get them because I knew I wanted some tone out of this car and it was like pretty much money I was not expecting to spend. But once you got the rumble, I mean. It's priceless, it's so enjoyable. And so that the, those headers, compared or paired with the HKS muffler I have I mean it's an awesome tone it's, I mean it's not like a truck from inside the car when I'm driving sometimes um, but yeah it's all right I just because I love it uh, the the hood is actually from a Forester XT I found it at a junkyard that popped up someone on the forums um, showed an XT that went in and I went up there the very next morning and when the first time working through a junkyard, walking around with toolbox, and I had no idea what I was getting into, but I just knew I went to the hood, got it for 40 bucks, came back, and I have the XT hood, and now it's completed the whole look for me as far as exterior. I'm very happy with the exterior with the lower stance with the hood skew. Um, and um, yeah, and that's it. So right now, I, I mean, since I got the car uh, wrapped, <clears throat> I, um, I plan on uh, either painting these with gunmetal or powder coating them or I do actually I do have a set of 17s in the garage uh, 10 spoke wheels that that I can get tires to for as well but my brother might buy them for me to put on this Corolla uh, I'm not sure about that yet but um but yeah that's pretty much it uh, but other than that I love this car this car has got some it's got some history you know uh, I get on it it's not definitely not fast obviously you're not buying this car for speed uh, one thing I love about this car is all the storage space you have I mean my goodness you got some there's a lot of room in here the station wagon and plus you know it's it's just awesome it's just like big toaster box and I love it go on sir get on there <clears throat> well I missed the light for letting him go I will not <laughs> Do it. Uh, when you're buying a uh, you know older used car, they they still have value. Um, like I said, I spent about probably twenty eight hundred altogether after the inspection, um, and it's been running like a solid champ. I did change the uh, spark plugs, ignition wire, just to know that it was done from NGK, um, and those were actually fairly easy to install. And then also, I had an issue with the with this car drinking oil. That's a big issue. Um, I drove about, I would say, 3,000 miles, and I had, I had to add, like, literally almost I four quarts of oil until I started seeing oil on the dipstick. And uh, checking the oil on this car is weird. Like, I had to check it. The, t the best time to check it is when it sits overnight. So you want to check it first thing in the morning, and that's when you want to add the oil uh, to get the most accurate reading because it fluctuates a lot. You know while you're driving when it's warm to temp uh, for this car particularly um so once i figured that out i was actually finally able to get an accurate reading and make sure it stays topped off to the correct line so uh, what i did was after that the next oil change i used this lucas synthetic oil stabilizer and that that has made a big difference i was driving uh, once again about another 3,000 miles and i checked the oil and I could still see oil on the line. I had to add about another maybe one and a half quart, but that's a big change from adding four quarts of oil. So it, it, it did something or something else happened, but it's a chance, I don't know. But anyways, the oil change I had today, I also added another uh, quart of the uh, Lucas synthetic oil stabilizer um, to use with synthetic oil. So hopefully, you know, as I keep using it, it starts, you know, keeping it more, you know, thicken it up and, 
it just keeps it from burning off so quickly. So luckily there's no leaking, because I mean obviously if it was leaking there would be puddles on the ground, so very lucky for that. Um, but yeah, so that was only a really major issue with this car, and it's just, like I said, with any car, always check your fluid, check your oil levels, take your tire pressure to keep those topped off, and everything else should take care of itself um, from there, so. Um, but that's about all I got for you. Hope this uh, review helped you guys. If you're looking for an old car, or you're just looking for a first car to start out with, you know, you definitely want to get something that's just naturally aspirated, something slow, not too crazy fast. You want something to learn, I recommend front wheel drive or all wheel drive for uh, first time beginners just because they're safer, easier to drive, you know, during the crazy weather. Um, and yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. So like I said, hope this helps and uh, We'll see you guys next time. Oh, for real? Yeah. Where at?